Hello everyone. How are you people of God? I pray that you all are uplifted in your faith and that you are excited about the things that are coming your way. There are great and mighty things that are coming our way people of God. This year I declare it in Jesus holy name. So thank you all so much for coming on joining with me and I am Lakeidra to my first timers God bless you and thank you for joining with us as well I pray people of God that you be encouraged I know that as I bring this word that it will uplift your faith show you the power that you've been given you know we are all standing in the gap for our loved ones who are believing God for victory in our homes our marriages we are trusting in this word as we come together each and every day. For we know that our Lord God cannot lie. And his word is what's showing us the way. And whose mind is stayed upon him. He will keep you in perfect peace. Whose trust is in God. And so I want us to take a look at the power God has given us again by the words that we speak and declare over our lives for we all know that death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof Proverbs 18 21 tells us this and you know in the book of James chapter 3 verse 10 in his writings, it's recorded how blessings and cursing comes pouring out of the same mouth, it tells us. And we saw where Jesus cursed the fig tree and it withered from the roots. The next day, in Mark chapter 11, verse 20, and also in Genesis chapter 9, verse 25 through 27, it is recorded from the writings of Moses, Noah cursed his own grandson, but yet he blessed his two other sons, Shem and Japheth. And so we also see in Genesis how God blessed humanity. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, how he blessed humanity. It tells us here, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And so the blessing or the curse will eventually come into fruition when it is spoken into the atmosphere we see this very clearly and so what are you speaking precious standards over your life and over your marriages how are you using the power of death and life in your tongue what type of harvest are you wanting to come forth in your life because that harvest will come forth by the words and the things that you say. Jesus says the things that we say, they can either condemn us or justify us. Whatever we say out of the abundance of our heart, that's what we will get back into our lives. For the words we speak, they are spirit and life when it comes out of the spirit, which is the heart. When they are spoken based off of what we believe, faith, what is in our heart, those things produces life. When there was darkness in the beginning, God spoke, let there be light and there was light. This lets us know that we should be speaking consistently over or against the things we don't want to see in our lives 
And does it line up with the word of God? And we are to replace it with the things that are written for our lives. In 1 Peter chapter 10 verse 12, I want us to take a look back at what Peter said. In 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 10 through 12, here we can see clearly how the tongue plays a big part in what goes on in our day-to-day -day lives. And also he shows us how living a godly life causes answers to our prayers. He says, for the scriptures say, meaning God say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. And so we can see that the tongue and the things we say plays a big part in our lives. They can cause us to see happy days and enjoy our lives or bad days and not see the joys in our lives. And so he's showing us how in order to in Enjoy your life and see happy days. See good things in your life. It's all about the tongue, what we say, what we are speaking. The negativity, the, the things that will bring forth evil and darkness in our lives. We shouldn't be speaking. And speaking truth. Here we can see that speaking lies. This can also ruin our lives. It can affect our lives in a negative way. But then he also tells us this. On how God will answer prayers as well. He says turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. And his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. And so we have to be mindful of this precious standards. We are in a war. We are in a war and a battle. For the things that are concerning our loved ones, our families, our marriages. Whatever else you will believe in God for, we must be careful of what we are saying and speaking. This is very important. This is the foundation into having a life that is filled with, with good days, happy days. We see this is what happened when God created the heavens and the earth. He had to speak things into existence. Of what he wanted to see. He had to speak against the darkness. By speaking light. When the earth was empty. And void and darkness covered it. He had to speak good things. In order to see restoration. And so you want to bless your marriage. Speak good things. Not curses. Remember what happened when the children of Israel. Were in the wilderness. And they were grumbling and complaining. And speaking against the will of God and speaking over their lies, negative things, it brought forth serpents. It made life extremely hard for them. They did not go into the promised land because of that. We see as it is recorded back in Numbers chapter 13 and 14, when Joshua and Caleb spoke the will of God, spoke blessings, glorified God was in agreement with his word they were able to go into the promised land but the others who didn't speak good things and spoke evil and lies against God and his word they died in the wilderness and many of them as well as you go on and look in those chapters you will find in the book of numbers where it brought forth curses when they were speaking evil 
and the serpents came forth and bit the people and a lot of them died all because of what came out of their mouths out of their own mouths he was telling them that the very things you have spoken is what's coming to pass in your lives and so we want to be careful of what we are speaking as Peter is showing us if we want to enjoy life and see many happy days then we have to watch what we are saying and speaking speak words of life over your marriage and curse the things and replace them with the word of God that you don't want to see remaining in your marriage and in your life for we know that God hates divorce and discord in families he hates anything that would dishonor our marriages. Therefore, when we pray, we want to pray his will and also speak his will over our lives. This will remove and replace the darkness with the word of God. The seed, hallelujah, that brings forth the harvest. And also, in order to intercede on the behalf of your spouse or your loved ones that you are standing in the gap for intercession cannot be made if there's unforgiveness if there's bitterness towards your spouse that have hurt you so badly or even the person that they may be in a relationship with and I know this is not easy precious standards I know you're hurting and I know that you may be bitter and and there may be signs of unforgiveness and so this is why we want to allow the Lord God to be our example we want to keep looking at him because he will help you he will give you the grace to overcome that hurt, that pain, and that unforgiveness. But we see clearly here in Mark, as we go back and take a look at it, in Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 26, where Jesus tells us clearly. He says, have faith in God. I tell you the truth that you can say to this mountain, meaning send forth words against it may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen jesus said that it will happen but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart so here we see that that whatever is in the heart it comes out in our lives if there's doubt there it can hinder the seed but if there is faith it can bring forth the seed it can help the seed bring forth life because the power is on the inside of us death and life is in the power of the tongue and so Jesus is showing us that whatever's in the heart it comes out in our life if you believe in that what you are saying will happen it will happen if you can see that thing happening in your life, Jesus says it will happen. If you can see it in your heart, if you know that you know that you know this thing will happen because it's in my heart, it will happen. If you believe in that, it will, it will. But then he goes on and says this now concerning prayer. He says, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But here he goes. When you are praying, First, forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. So here we see that intercession and prayer will be impossible if we're not praying out of a pure heart. If we are holding a grudge against someone or their trespassing against us if we are holding it over their head Jesus is showing us that this will hinder the father from hearing and answering your prayers this lines up with what Peter also said 
And so he's showing us how to keep God from turning his face against us and his ears to where he's not hearing our prayers. Because you see, God hates unforgiveness. He forgave. And so he's showing us that whatever we sow, we'll reap. So if we sow forgiveness, we're, we'll receive. We will receive forgiveness. And what we sow out of our mouths, we'll also reap. So everything is a seed. And it produces a harvest back into our own lives. That will be the fruit thereof. And so we cannot let the enemy deceive us by being reckless and careless with the power that comes out of our mouth if we don't use it properly this is what happened with Noah he cursed his own grandson out of anger he was angry with his son Ham so he cursed Ham's son Canaan and this is how things begin to happen in the earth this is what Sodom and Gomorrah was eventually founded it was the people that came from the descendants of ham all because of one man speaking a curse on ham's entire generation he also noah also spoke the blessing over his two sons which is sham and japheth now we can see that that blessing came forth abraham came from Shams descendants and so that works what we say we'll see it come back eventually it'll come back it can affect our lives if we're not careful and so what you know I've heard so many say what you see today is what you sold yesterday and so it is time, people of God, to uproot the things that you are seeing in your life, in your homes, your family, your marriages, and replace it with good things. Replace it with the word and the will of God for your life. As the scripture shows us God's will for our lives. A man shall leave father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one. The man shall love his wife as his own body and the wife shall respect and honor her husband as the church honors and respect the Lord. The husband love his wife as Christ loves the church. Hallelujah. Who is the head of his body. And so we want this same image and likeness to be in our homes, our families, our marriages. Therefore, we must send forth the word meditate on it day and night let it dwell richly in your heart because what's in the heart is what's going to come out of your mouth and that will be the fruit thereof so we want to meditate on the word get a vision of what your marriage is supposed to look like and declare it and decree it each and every day meditate on what jesus said about life in your mouth and how you are able to speak to the mountain and commanded to go how you are able to speak to things and it will happen meditate on that let that word penetrate really get it deep down in your heart so you can believe that the things you say will come to pass you know many have a hard time believing that words are life it creates your future and so we have to be be like-minded with God. We have to think as people of the kingdom think. We have to have the mind of Christ and not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. It's time that we come out of carnality, meaning being carnal-minded, and let's rise up and become spiritual-minded. It's going to take renewing your mind, connecting yourself, with God so that you can become a spiritual minded person a spiritual minded person as you were created to be let your mind be open to the things of God and his sayings 
as he tells us in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 through 22. Pay attention to my words. Keep them before your eyes and in the midst of your heart for they bring life to you and healing to all of your body. Then he tells us to guard our hearts for out of it comes the issues of life. And so we want to be like-minded with God. We want to think spiritually. We want to be in his image and likeness, doing the things that he did. Jesus says, the works I do, ye shall do also, but it's going to take having a renewed mind, having a spiritual mind. For the natural mind cannot follow the things of the spirit because it is foolishness to him, the Bible tells us that. And when there is doubt, when you don't understand things, it will be hard to have faith. It will be hard to believe when there is no understanding. So we have to have an understanding. Understand what it is like to walk after the Spirit and do the things as the Lord. Do the things that He did in the earth. Being spiritual minded. He was led by the Spirit, the Bible tells us. He went about doing good in Acts 1038 through the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah and so we are to allow Jesus to be our example and Peter tells us this as well as I go back in Peter chapter 3 real quickly the Bible tells us in 1st Peter chapter 2 verses 21 through 25 for God called you to do good even if it means suffering just as Christ suffered for you he is your example and you must follow in his steps in order to to bring about salvation there were things he had to go about doing but he done it through the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost that Acts chapter 10 verse 38 tells us about. And so people of God, Jesus is our example. We watch him. He will help us to forgive by us seeing his love and his mercy and his ways. His word washes us. His word renews our hearts. His word brings forth life and victory in our homes and our in our and in our marriages and relationships and so watch what we say walk uprightly before god because it pleases him and his ears are always open to our prayers i'm telling you begin to speak the word of god let the word of god penetrate deep in your heart let things begin to Start moving and shifting in the rim of the spirit by you using your word. You know, this is what I've been doing. And, and it just, it has me so strong in my faith. I know things are shifting. I know they are turning around. There are coming more and more testimonies, which I will be sharing as well. So be looking forward for that. It's just so amazing of what God is doing and hearing you all share your powerful testimonies. It's what's bringing forth breakthroughs. Hallelujah. You're on the right path, people of God. God, your heart keeps speaking blessings over your life. It doesn't matter what you are seeing. Don't allow anger to get a hold of you because it makes us speak forth things that are not pleasing unto God. It causes us to get offended and speak curses over the very people we love and adore. We cannot, allow, we cannot allow the enemy to trip us up. Hallelujah. We have to be wiser than the serpent and harmless as a dove. Keep speaking the word. Things are coming forth. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Things are happening, people of God. Jesus cannot lie. Here we have seen it through the examples in the word of God how life and death is truly in the power of your tongue. Thank you, Lord God, for peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we declare and decree 
that wayward spouses are getting back in contact with their loved ones in Jesus name. Lord God, we thank you that their footsteps are being ordered by you now. You are speaking to their hearts now in Jesus name. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, Lord God, for overturning stony, stubborn hearts. Oh, we praise you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We adore you and love you. Thank you for the power of death and life in our tongues. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil. And nothing shall by any means harm us. We praise you, O oh God, in advance for the best is yet to come. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for miracles, more and more miracles and breakthroughs in marriages and harmony and unity and love and grace. Oh, we praise you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord God, that even unforgiveness and bitterness has to go. Lord, thank you for softening hearts, helping standards that are hurting, O oh God. And thank you for healing, healing the broken hearts in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, thank you for everyone that has been supporting the work. Oh God, may you bless the works of their hands and the seeds they have sown. May you multiply them 100 fold back return, oh God, as you tell us in your word, what we sow, we will reap back. And so Lord, I thank you for everyone, everyone, Lord God, and they're supporting your work. Lord, we give you the praise for you will always remember our good deeds as your word tells us. We bless you in advance and we love you and adore you. Thank you for your favor, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Loving people of God, for he loves you, and I love you too. Remember, you are blessed, and until next time, bye-bye.